Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. And this is a short interview that appeared on the Digital Asset Investors channel today, DAI. I just love this so much. It is an interview that had Miguel Vies. And of course, Miguel started back in 2016 with Ripple. He just recently left in April. But while he was there, he was fine tuning the use case of XRP, building out that liquidity. And if you can imagine, he was, you know, his mandate was to sell something that had not been proven. It had not been done before. It was basically a concept on paper. But he says in this interview that XRP is proving out. And the one point that I really wanted to bring up, and you probably heard this, but there was a little bit of a sound quality issue that was fading in and fading out. And he did say that you'd be foolish. You'd have to be foolish not to recognize the potential of XRP, especially with all the progress Ripple has made. So I think that it's very important since it's coming from an employee who is no longer with them. And also there was a nice article that came out from the coin speaker, and it is talking about how the XRP remittances have gone live in Europe. And yeah, it talks about the price jump too of 7%. Well, actually, Ripple has seen, or XRP has seen more than 7% in the last 24 hours. It's really nice to see uh, this movement across the board for many of the alts. And one of those corridors that I'm personally waiting for is Thailand. And we have the utility tracker here, which is the utility-scan.com. And originally, they reported that they saw some volume happening with the Thai bot, but they did say that it looks like it was a bug. So they're looking into it. If I hear any updates, I'll be sure to let you know. The one story, however, that just exploded in Thailand was this one. I found no less than 20 different media sources covering the details of Siam Commercial Bank with Ripple, delivering this special promotion of international money transfers through their SCB Easy mobile app. And they're going to give a 50% savings for every transfer, just 199 baht per transfer. That's about $6 uh, USD. And looking at the website, we can see the service details. And this promotion is going to go on until December. And depending on which country and uh, what transfer system the other uh, destination country is using, it can arrive anywhere from immediate to one day or immediate to two days, but that is the United Kingdom, the Singapore dollar and the Euro countries. So it looks like the ripple net rails are really in place. Now we just have to wait for that announcement on on-demand liquidity being live. And earlier today, we had the uh, senior director of product at Ripple. This is Craig DeWitt, and he was on a virtual panel with ODL Exchange Bitso. The representative there was Santiago Alvarado, and they talked about a big milestone that Bitso has made. They have reached 1 million users. That's very impressive. And they launched in Mexico, and they did that back in 2014. And they just entered into Argentina, and they are looking to launch in Brazil now. Now, I have found an interview that you really want to listen to. This is with Bitso before they launched. It's April 2014. And it really gives you a good sense to why Ripple invested in these guys. Here are the co-founders. This is Pablo Gonzalez on the left and Ben Peters on the right. So remember, this is just before they went live. And I think you're really going to understand their vision when you hear this. This is, this is really, this is an important video. Let me just make sure I've got the sound. Okay. Have a listen. Like one of the issues right now is that there's not enough liquidity in Mexico to really have a successful remittance market through Bitcoin or uh, any other cryptocurrencies. So we're, we're hoping to uh, create that liquidity with this exchange so that we can then focus on remittance, which is 
our main mission pretty much for pizza. Um, for sure, no, it's definitely it's a huge market, and it, you can actually do a lot of good in the world. You know, like right now, the average remittance is something like ten percent. The cost is something like ten percent. With Bitcoin, you could just you know, move it to next to nothing. We we could definitely lower those fees quite a bit. So yeah, it's about nine point four percent, and sometimes there's uh, something lost on uh, the exchange rates and things. So you're looking at ten to fifteen percent of uh, a cost that it uh, would cost. Uh, somebody here in the States working 18 hours a day or something. And that's a pretty big part of their wages. So we want to definitely try to uh, get more money. Like if we were able to lower those fees, that's more money for the families receiving the money. Oh, for sure. So, I mean, yeah, it could make a huge difference to a lot of people's lives. So it's, it's nice to be doing something that's actually making the world a better place um, yeah, as well as running a solid business. No, for sure. And it seems like in finance, the poorest people are the ones that are hurt the most by all these fees. And not only that, uh, when you think about it, is the US to Mexico is the largest remittance corridor in the world. It's uh, about a $23 billion industry. And uh, so if you look at 10 to 15%, that's at least 2 to $3 billion that the companies like Western Union or MoneyGram pocket, uh, which are the main players, basically. So two to three billion dollars, we can definitely, we can just cut the fees and get a small share of that. Uh, we can actually afford to have really low, low fees. So you can make money saving these people a fortune. Exactly. So do you see this? So this is uh, their main mission, remittances. Did you catch that? I think it really speaks for itself in regards to the good that XRP is doing. So I would like to tell anyone who calls XRP a scam, you tell that to the family members who are receiving money home from people who have made the sacrifice to leave their family to go send money home. I just think that it just doesn't hold any water whatsoever. All right, so we are going to now see Pablo Gonzalez today. Actually, this is from Tuesday. And he's in a nearly two hour webinar. And it was in Spanish. Yeah, I know. And but I have one trick to do is and that is to take all the comments and cut and paste them into the Google Translate, which has provided a great insight to what was discussed. There was a lot of talk about work being done in Vancouver, Canada. So Vancouver, Canada, who is in Vancouver? You can see there's Ben Peters. He is in Vancouver right now. And that's the co-founder that you just saw in that interview prior on the right-hand side. He is uh, also the CTO of Bitso. And along with Ben, there is someone working with him. This is Miguel Kudry. He is Bitso's Director of Financial Services, building out the next generation of products and services powered by cryptocurrency. And he says that we are executing global expansion to Latin America. So absolutely, where possible, Bitso will replicate their success that they're having as a facilitator of XRP and their on-demand liquidity for the remittances. And we all know that they are going to Brazil and we have been told that Brazil is coming on live very soon. I think it's important to see that this was their original goal from the beginning, April 2014, to get into remittances. I'm telling you, Ripple was really smart to invest in this company. All right, this is a give to charities through Pay ID. I'm going to put a link to it down in the description below. It's so easy, and you can do it in about two to three minutes. You'll actually get your ID. You can see here, Crypto Eddie, dollar sign, spring dot money and in doing so i was given a hundred xrp in a payout card and then i could choose from one of the four charities which the first one here help women and girls suffering from poverty globally or you can choose to give directly uh, which is giving it right to people living in poverty or there's mercy corps who is uh, going to help communities forge new paths to prosperity, or you can choose the water project, which is helping individuals in sub-Saharan Africa 
to get access to clean water. And I, th I think if you want, I gave to just one, but I think you could split it up. I think you could go 25, 25, 25, and 25 if you just felt like all of them were good charities to give to. But anyway, I think it's a great way to get involved. It's a great extension of how XRP can be used. So do take the time and do it. I'll put the link in the description below. And then this is just, uh, this is, this is to humor you because it totally humored me. This is Mr. Kristoff. He used to be a BTC miner. He's not doing that anymore, but he still tweets and he still has a YouTube channel. And this is just too funny. Have a listen. And then I would like to comment. Out of curiosity, does anyone in the cryptocurrency Bitcoin community still think that Ripple or XRP is still relevant? And the responses I got, they weren't good. No one's supporting them. You see, here's something else. Once upon a time, I don't know how long you've been in the space. We've been in the space long enough. Once upon a time, if you tweet anything XRP or Ripple related, they had this army, this bot army that would just hit you with this onslaught of comments. I mean, it was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. It actually made it to where people didn't even want to say anything negative about XRP just because they didn't want to deal with the onslaught of bots just terrorizing you. It's crazy, but now you can say whatever you want about XRP. Their bots are turned off. It's like, it's a whole different animal now. <laughs> so our bots are turned off. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Kristoff, it's so funny. You have 4,352 followers on Twitter. It's okay. Now, only 13 are following you that are following me, and I've got 37,000. So when you look at the slice of the pie, you're not getting the full picture. And as a BTC miner, I know that your audience is really out of touch with XRP. It's okay. But I want to tell you that it's um you humored me because in 2019 i added 13,000 subscribers to my youtube channel in 2020 i'm on track to add 20,000 <laughs> and i'm not even the biggest out there you know you look at kevin cage and dai to the lifeboats bearable bull they're going to totally eclipse me so yes xrp is still very relevant and i think on a serious note this is really what you know because these things these things really make me think. And I do take the point of view that the so-called army, which has never been a bot army ever, is smarter now and more informed. And I think everybody is getting more chilled, very much like the space they have matured. And they don't care so much about these silly, stupid, ridiculous comments like like they did when it was still an unproven project. But I think now that it's becoming a proven project uh, and we see real progress of all those ripple net rails being laid and the slow but sure live ODL corridors going in and the confirmed corridors that have been told that are going to go live soon. I just don't think people care as much about what you say. Now it just seems actually really humorous. All right, I'm going to show you one of those real uh, bots. This is a <laughs> real person. This is Andy at SPQR. He's one of the SPQR groups. They did a lot of really great research in the XRP space, but he has started a new channel. I wanted to tell you about it because I think this particular bot <laughs> is doing some good work when it comes to helping people. I'll put a link to his new channel down below, but you do, he, he seems he's got a really great skill when it comes to hypnosis and he's helping people quit smoking he's helping you relax and be able to get a good night's sleep if you have insomnia which i know a lot of people struggle from not being able to sleep anyway here's an example of an xrp army bot that's doing real work for real people all right everyone let's just jump to the fluff Oh my gosh, this is part of this uh, new world we're in. This took place on the 7th of July, and this is a baseball game. It's the uh, SoftBank Hawks game. And I've told you many times that Japan loves its robots. Oh, this is the seventh inning stretch. Have a look. Da 
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I just can't believe the world that we're living in. And I want to show you here. This is a firefly. It's called a hotaru in Japanese, and it belongs to the beetle family. This is actually a Genji hotaru, and it is one of just one of 2,000 different kinds out there in the world. This one is indigenous to Japan. They spend uh, seven months of their of their life, their very short life, actually living in water, feeding on snails. But when they become an adult, and that happens sometimes in late June or sometimes in uh, the beginning of July, they start their nighttime flights to find a mate. And there is a place in Nagano that has a park where you can do firefly viewing. Actually, firefly viewing has been a tradition in Japan for a thousand years. And this one happens on either side of the river called the Tendu Kawa. This is the, um, the Heavenly Dragon River. <laughs> so it really is something that's quite an event. It, it is supposed to start tomorrow for the public, but it's been canceled for people. They can't go. So all these fireflies are going to have a chance to uh, have some peace and quiet. And the great thing about the firefly is it shows up. This is one here. It shows up in so many different uh, artworks that have been made over hundreds of years. And it also um, is part of an important it plays an important part of the haiku, which is the poetry in Japan. And I just want to play for you. Uh, can I do this? Yeah, I can do this. I want to show you a video that is showing you what that park looks like. And I'm going to just read a very short haiku for you. It goes like this. Wearing my kimono loosely to meet him fireflies at night. I hope you enjoyed. Do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.